passing messages in Erlang or in Erlmud is complicated. So I'll just kind of gloss over it. Every, all the logic for the game is handled in modules that are stateless. There is no player object. There's just player logic. A player logic, if you, if you pass player logic, the properties for a player, it will know what, and, a, and an event that happened, it will know what to do with those properties based on that event. If you say the player got attacked, it will change the player's hit points. If you say the player died, it will, again, probably change the player's hit points. So the, the logic that is handled, that handles all the messages being passed around, who's seen the message, who hasn't seen the message, what was the first room that was encountered, that'll be these objects. So each object knows what module, what type, it needs to pass its properties off to to handle each message. So what is my, what is the logic that needs to handle me? So if you're familiar with, say, Java, you might say that a player, that an object is the superclass, and, and a player is a subclass of object. So object, this is object, and in Java, that is the, the main super, like the super, super parent class. Um, the object will handle all the graph communications and the subject will, um, uh, the subclass, why subject? No, not subject, an idiot. The subclass would be like, this would be object and this would be player. And then player would handle anything specific to players, but it wouldn't handle anything that, that object handled. And it wouldn't be an implementation because you would need to inherit all of that, um, all of that uh, logic. So instead, in Erlang, uh, we just have a different, uh, a different logic module that gets called by an object process. So uh, this is the um, this is the object class, and the the main idea is that you pass out an attempt along the graph. Like so let's say this player is sending out a message. It'll it'll say it'll pass an attempt to everybody connected to it up to one room away, and and give everybody a chance to say, do you do you want to block this message? Do you want to resend this message to something else, or do you want to fail this message? An example of resending it to something else is if um, I'm sending you a message that is um, like say attack, and I'm saying Bob. And I'm sending that from a player. So this player says attack Bob. Well, Bob gets the message and his PID, his uh, process ID is like 502. He'll say, oh, well, scratch that. Let's resend that message as attack um, 502. Now, if Bob was sentient, he would probably say, well, attack somebody else. Don't attack me. But these processes will own up to what their names are so that, that a player can actually send it to a process because Bob is not linked to a process. But this process has a property in a property list, if I could do a brace, it has a property that is in a property list called um, like name, Bob. And so whenever a message comes in that's, uh, that's an attack, he'll listen and say, hey, is that for a Bob? And if it is, then change the message, resend the message, ditch the original, and resend it as attack 502. So that's why you might want to resend a message. Um, so we send out an attempt and then we wait to see what happens uh, when we get it back. So that would be our result. And then we handle the results. So do we need to resend it? Okay, well, let's do a new process record of, of who's seen it, who hasn't seen it, who's interested. Is it a fail? Okay, everybody who has subscribed to the results of that message, send them the failure, the original message and the reason it failed. Did it succeed? Great. Let's keep sending the message on. So if we have any more processes that haven't seen it, we'll send it to them. If we have, if we don't have any more messages that haven't seen it, then anyone who's subscribed to that, we'll send them the message. Uh, there's one small trick is that you can actually, instead of resending the message, you can change the message. So for instance, if you're a player and you get a message called um, calculate next attack weight, you are gonna get a message that has calculate next attack weight, what the attack process is, um, ourselves, if we're the player that was attacking, what we're attacking, when the this message was sent, and how long we want to wait. Well, if we resend that message, then anybody who has seen it now will see it again, and this will just keep going on forever. So instead, we just modify the message. We find out how long we want to wait, and we add that to the wait that was passed to us. So everybody has a chance to either add or subtract from that wait, and then we pass that back, and so Earl Mud Object will actually get 
um, you can actually pass it a modified message that it will then pass on to everybody else. Otherwise, it will just take the original message and pass it on. So that's handling the message. And then we have a whole bunch of logic for finding out um, who needs to see the message, who's seen the message, who's subscribed to the message. That's what all this logic does in merge um, and in next. And then, um, and then this is a behavior. Um, so it would be like uh, an interface in Java where anybody, any module that wants to in implement um, the Erlmud object, like Erlmud player, has to implement all the um, functions that are specified in that behavior. So the player is actually an interface um, uh, or the, uh, yeah, the player implements the object interface. Um, so it's kind of a, it's kind of goofy. Whereas in, whereas in Java, you would, you would inherit that, lo that logic. It works the other way around where this player actually implements the sort of the, um, uh, uh, this, this object, uh, has, it, it is a interface it has an interface that the that the logic modules will implement, but it also has code that it will actually run. So it's kind of kind of a little little different than Java. And that's about it. Like I mean, you have to dig into the code and figure out how it works. And I have um, an, uh, like a video on how attacking works. But that's basically the gist of it. You send out messages to see if they're going to pass. If they pass, then you notify everybody. And then URL attack is a specific instance of all these different steps that have to happen to see if, um, if, if an event will happen. First, we need to see if, if we can find the target. Then we need to see if, uh, how much, um, whether or not we're going to hit the person. So every, every object that's connected in any way um, within a couple rooms, like this player, if he's trying to attack um, this AI, everything gets to have its say on whether that player hits, which means if you have a ring of plus two to hit, that'll, that'll change it. If the AI has a shield um, that makes it more difficult for you to hit, then that'll change it. If there is a, um, some, you know, a priest chanting a spell in the next room over that gives him a buff, then that will affect um, whether or not you get a chance to hit. Does the same thing for damage. Anyways, I won't go to that whole video. So anyways, that's how um, the underlying object um, uh, processes and logic modules work uh, to pass messages along a graph in um, Erlmud.